why you are welcome to the question hour show from the parliament house complex your show where we bring you important us start questions asked by the members of the upper house during the current session which is the 250th session of the rajya sabha and the response given by the government in written format i am kriti mishra and joining me is my colleague rajat king thank you for watching question hour so rajat let's take our viewers to important questions and answers in this edition of question hour So the first question in this edition is for the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and this one has been asked by member Kanta Kardam. And Mrs Kardam has asked the government whether it has issued guidelines for proper implementation of various ongoing schemes dedicated for welfare of scheduled castes. Well in a reply the ministry answered in affirmative saying yes all the schemes of Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment have guidelines of proper implementation and implementing agencies are required to comply with these guidelines regular monitoring of these schemes is being done through progress reports meetings conferences video conferencing regular field visits and so on proposals are scrutinized by multidisciplinary state level grant in aid committee and submission of utilization certificates duly verified by chartered accountant going on the ministry said no data regarding number of sc persons living below poverty line is available in the ministry however all such schemes being implemented for welfare of scheduled caste have the objective of developing a balanced and egalitarian society in india well the next question was asked by kk rakesh from the ministry of finance and he sought to know whether government has decided disinvestment of more public sector undertakings that is the psus well in the response the government says that it follows a policy of disinvestment through minority stake sale and strategic disinvestment strategic disinvestment implies that a substantial sale of government share holding of a cpsc along with transfer of management control as well the policy of strategic disinvestment is followed in respect of cpscs which are not in priority sector for this purpose niti aayog has been mandated to identify such cpscs based on the criteria of national security sovereign functions at arms length and also market imperfections and public purposes and the next question has also been asked by member kk rakesh and this one pertains to the ministry of finance and mr rakesh has asked the government whether it is considering to exempt the primary cooperatives from income tax net well in the reply minister said no presently there is no such proposal under consideration however it may be noted that existing provisions of section 80p of the income tax act 1961 provides reduction to various cooperative societies other than specified cooperative banks subject to fulfillment of conditions specified in the said section the quantum of deduction under the said section depends upon nature of activities carried out by the cooperative societies in fact member kk rakesh joined us on the question hour show and this is what he had to say on government's response You asked two pertinent questions. Let me begin with the first one first. You've asked about disinvestment of PSUs, and you've expressed apprehension over it. The issue is that in our country, the government has decided to sell out 33 public sector undertakings. 33 public sector undertakings are going to be sold out. My question, in fact, in my supplementary question, I was asking. what is the total amount that the government has to forego due to the uh, disinvestment because uh, government is getting uh, dividend every year and uh, in, in other forms also government is uh, making revenue from uh, psu so what is the amount that the government has to forego through this uh, disinvestment that is also very important because you are selling out uh, the public sector undertakings which are your national worth, wealth and the government is saying that it it has uh, nothing to do with the priority sector but these are the important assets that has been created over so many years now you are simply selling out those psus that is a concern that i had uh, raised so other important question that you've asked is about exemption of cooperatives from income tax how important is the issue in fact the question that i had raised is on the basis of the experience uh, from kerala in kerala all these uh, uh, cooperative banks they are using the name as banks but at the same time they are set up as uh, cooperative credit societies of farmers cooperative credit societies and uh, the if the government is going to impose income tax on those farmers cooperative credit societies as they are using the term bank 
in fact they are, they are not bank they are farmers cooperative credit societies primary credit societies so if they, the government is going to impose the income tax on those credit societies uh, i can uh, undoubtedly all those uh, farmers cooperative credit societies are going to be sabotaged so the government has to consider the request of the farmers it's a, it is the farmers who had set up those primary cooperative credit societies so what is your suggestion to the government government has to take a decision to exempt exempt income tax uh, on uh, this farmers cooperative credit societies the next question was asked by the member sushil kumar gupta and he sought to know from the ministry of labor and employment that whether government has taken cognizance of practice of child labor still going on in various parts of the country despite having a ban over it well the government has given a very comprehensive reply to this question and the government goes on to say that child labor is an outcome of various socio economic considerations such as illiteracy poverty and economic backwardness and the government has said that it is committed to eliminating child labor from india the government has also amended the child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 and enacted child labor prohibition and regulation amendment act 2016 which came into force with effect from 1st of september 2016 the amendment act provides for complete prohibition of work or employment of children below 14 years of age in any occupation and process and prohibition of adolescents in the age group of 14 to 18 years in hazardous occupations and also processes the amendment act also provides the stricter punishment for employers for violation of this act and has made the offence as a cognizable offence as per provisions contained in the act whoever employs any child or permits any child to work in contravention shall be punished with imprisonment of a term which shall not be less than 6 months but which may extend up to 2 years or with fine which shall not be less than 20000 rupees but which may also extend to 50000 rupees or both And the next question has been asked by member B L Yadav and this one pertains to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. And Mr Yadav has asked the government whether it has approved an investment of 5000 crore rupees by ONGC into its overseas arm ONGC Videsh. And if so, the details thereof. Well, in its reply, the minister said ONGC has cumulatively invested 15000 crore in equity share capital of ONGC Videsh Limited by converting loan into equity. The last time this was done in the financial year 2015 and 16 when loan worth 5000 crore was converted into equity explaining further in the reply the government said ONGC Videsh has been acquiring overseas oil and gas assets in order to strengthen energy security of the country and to fund these acquisitions and for exploration of exploration activities ONGC has been providing equity to ONGC Videsh limited in addition debts is raised from the markets to maintain sustainable model acceptable to credit rating agencies further conversion of loans from ongc to equity of ongc videsh limited strengthens capital base of the latter well the next question was asked by three members dr ami yagnik rajmani patel and dr l hanumanthaya they sought to know from minister of social justice and empowerment that whether government is considering any proposal or scheme to eliminate caste system from the society well in the response the government says that caste based prejudices have historically led to the practice of untouchability in india and article 17 of constitution of india has abolished untouchability and its practice in any form and has also enforced any disability arising out of untouchability it has made as an offence punishable in accordance with law An act of parliament the protection of civil rights act 1955 prescribes punishment for the enforcement of any disability arising from the practice of untouchability the government further goes on to say that under a centrally sponsored scheme for implementation of protection of civil rights act 1955 the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act 1989 based on specific proposals of state governments and union territory administrations for a financial year due to central assistance is released to them towards incentive for intercaste marriage also towards incentive for a number of scheduled caste developments and also for schemes the incentive amount which was earlier decided by concerned states and union territories has been uniformly made to 2.50 lakh for all duties and states with effect from 14th of september 
2017. And let's move on to the last question of this edition of Question Hour, which has been asked by member Amar Shankar Sabli, and this one pertains to the Ministry of Steel. And Mr. Sabli has inquired the Ministry about steel scrap policy. Well, in the reply, the Ministry said the steel scrap recycling policy has been notified in the Gazette of India, wide number 354, on 7th November 2019. The policy provides a framework to facilitate and promote establishment of metal scrapping centres in India for scientific processing and recycling of ferrous scrap generated from various sources and a variety of products. The policy framework provides standard guidelines for collecting, dismantling and shredding activities in an organised, safe and environmental friendly manner. The policy prescribes guidelines for setting up the responsibilities of dismantling centres and scrap process processing centres, role of aggregators and responsibility of government, manufacturer and even the owner. Continuing in the reply, the government said steel scrap recycling policy doesn't envisage setting up of scrap centres in the country by the government. The role of government is to rather provide a framework to facilitate and promote establishment of metal scrapping centres in the country. Well, Rajat, these were the important questions right. and answers in this edition of Question Hour. But on the other side, we'll have Prashnakal in Hindi with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh. Stay tuned to Rajasabha Television. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV for more. Thank you.